as I've mentioned, and I fully, fully regret my decision to be here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming. That's exactly what I wish I was at home doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel like, when I signed up for this, I didn't know so many people would be here, like, genuinely. Um, so... <laughs> uh, Oh fuck, I forgot already. <laughs> I didn't know so many people would be here, which is a bonus and orgy, but not so much right now. <laughs> but at least I did, like as I mentioned, I signed up to this by myself instead of being dragged along by one of my cousins. Um, so, yeah, if you can't tell just by my being here, I'm going through a bit of a crisis at the moment. And I know that everyone's, <laughs> I know that everyone's 20s are a bit like that. Like, don't get me wrong, a bit of a time to work out who you are, experiment. You know, it doesn't matter that I fucking hate my career, all that jazz. But the bit that I'm... <laughs> The bit that I struggle with most, I guess, is being 34. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a bit of a oh no, I've met, I keep messing up already because I'm so nervous. Yeah, but the only thing that's evolved about me, I feel like, since I was 16, is my anxiety. Like, I used to be really nervous about the normal things, like leaving the hair straighteners on, the price of central heating, that girl I fucking hate doesn't like me. But now it is like constant fear of death. Like, to to, like as a woman, there is the constant credible threat of murder to contend with. But this, is all, this is worse than that. It's like every time I leave the house, I'm terrified that I'm going to be mauled to death by an XL bully. And I've never seen one, so I don't really know where it comes from. And then there's also like the Titanic is my favourite horror movie because all the men die first. Um, and I have this like I have this reoccurring daydream that I uh, run into an eccentric billionaire that offers me the opportunity to go and see the remains and the rest of the boat. But it turns out that his submarine is like just pulled together by Heinz baked bean tins and is controlled by an off-off Xbox controller, so it explodes before we get to the bottom. Um, and then there's the more realistic things to worry about, like what if I die in a, like a hospital corridor? <laughs> because the Tories have fucked the NHS. Um, and then it doesn't help that I'm at the age, like obviously I know I'm not old, but I, like, if I look at my hands, they are expiring before my own eyes. Like, it always looks as if I've spent a wee bit too long in the bath. <laughs> Wait, sorry, I'm gonna have to look at my arm. <laughs> um, wait, 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 I'm back. Wait. <laughs> the term midlife crisis is anxiety inducing because at 34, kind of too young, 68, feeling ambitious because I drink too much wine. And then there is obviously the fact that Gen Z, I mean, they're fast approaching, their opinions are more valid than mine, and it's like they want you to resolve all your toxic traits overnight or you're fucking cancelled, which is, which is fine, but I am fat phobic. And don't get me wrong, all your bodies are lovely, I only fucking hate myself. But as a millennial woman, I feel like the world has just tried to beat that out of me, and they just can't. Like, it's not my fault. I grew up the whole time saying, like, learning that being a wee fatty is the worst thing that could have happened to me. And it's not my fucking fault that it worked. Like, to put it into context, I have been sexually assaulted twice, gained the stone, worst thing. <laughs> my <b> <laughs> Genuinely, one of my bosses mentioned the other day that a kid had neurovirus, and I worked from home, but I was like delighted at the opportunity to catch germs, so I decided to get on that commute and <laughs> made an excuse to go into the office. Spent the day that doing things that I wouldn't normally do, like I touched all the buttons on the left, licked the self service checkout with Tesco, spoke to my colleagues. <laughs> And I didn't catch it, but what did happen is that my death fantasies like kind of calmed down because when I pictured a nuke coming down like on the commute, I was like, fuck it, I'm kind of ready. <laughs> Gen Z are actually not that bad, to be fair. Like, I feel like they're the first generation that are coming to terms with the fact that love is love, gender, sexuality and virginity are all conflict, like constructs. They never kink shame, you can shag whoever you want. I just sadly still like men as a violent thing to sexual women. <laughs> like, I'm one of those sad bitches that thinks that maybe I was born in the wrong romantic generation. Like, what happened to men getting lost at sea? <laughs> maybe I would vote for the Tories if they brought back national service for over 35s. And I know that's, look, I know that's controversial, but I feel like I'm a bit fucked now anyway. It's a good chance at love and or widower's pension. <laughs> 
Um, and as I said, these kids like, don't get me wrong, I'm on all the apps, but I'm fully aware that I am kind of the problem, like I'm using them wrong. <laughs> like I'm swiping through these things like a 90s kid that grew up without the internet, like used an Argos catalogue, like just <laughs> picturing how this one bit of crap might be that one bit of crap that changes my whole entire life. And I know what you're all thinking, how is this fucking normal, gorgeous woman uh, still single? <laughs> But the answer is fairly, fairly simple. It's just like, why we, as a woman who is got body dysmorphia, terrified of dying, why would I be in a real hurry to find, settle down and sleep beside with the man that's most likely to, or the person that's most likely to slag off my body or kill me? 